Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And before we start today's video, we're doing another mailbag video in the next couple of days here, meaning you need to use the hashtag Eagles in the comment section down below right now to get your question in. That way you can answer it on the show. I'm looking specifically for trade proposals. So if you have a player you want the Eagles to trade for or a player you want the Eagles to trade away, give me your uh, trade ideas down below or just your general questions. You guys know the drill here. Mailbag, hashtag Eagles. Get your questions in for a video later on this week. All right, so today on Thought of Eagles Now, we're going to go ahead and continue our two-part series of four players now on offense who must step up going into the 2020 season. A couple days, or a couple weeks ago now, we did a video where it was four defensive players who must step up. Now we're going to do four offensive players who must step up. So if you missed the defensive player video, check that one out. We're going to start with our offensive players, and a wide receiver has got to step up and to be the perfect example of someone who really needs to have a big year. Talked about it a lot, Deshaun Jackson. Now, you can make the argument that Alshon Jeffrey should step up or Jalen Rager should step up. But really, if you go down to the nitty-gritty who's the best wide receiver on this team, when healthy, in my opinion, it is Deshaun Jackson. Now, of course, he missed the majority of the 2019 season, you know, was injured basically after week one, tried to come back in the Bears game, wasn't able to, and sat out the rest of the year. He's finally healthy. He's training hard, and it looks like he's trying to have one of his, hopefully his best year in his entire career, which is absolutely crazy in terms of his age, but it looks like he's not only going to be having a good year, but he's also going to try and be a big-time mentor for Jalen Rager as head coach Doug Peterson mentioned in his press conference last week. He's hoping Deshaun Jackson will take Rager under his wing and get him ready to go for the 2020 season. A healthy Deshaun Jackson this year, in my opinion, is as dangerous of a player as there is in the National Football League. He was Tyreek Hill before Tyreek Hill. People will, will, people will forget that. It was like, oh no, well, Tyreek Hill's way faster. No, Deshaun Jackson was arguably the most explosive wide receiver in the NFL during the peak of his powers, his first stint in Philadelphia. Much like how Tyree Kill is right now with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. If Jackson can just recreate even 80% of his former self in terms of what he was when he first came to Philadelphia, whenever he was drafted, he can be a dangerous, dangerous player and really make the Eagles overall, not only as a wide receiver group, but as a team as explosive and dangerous as possible. Now pair him with Alshon Jeffrey, who should be healthy. Pair him with John Rager, the new rookie, Marquise Goodwin, and you can see why a lot of people are very excited about the Eagles' overall wide receiver outlook. But the focus remains on Deshaun Jackson because because again, not only was he not healthy last year, he didn't contribute last year, and he's trying to change that in order to have a big, big year here in 2020. I found this tweet from John Clark from NBC, uh, I believe in, in Philadelphia, which to me is, is perfect. It's a video of Deshaun Jackson working out as he posted on his official Twitter account. But John Clark says this, Deshaun Jackson has been working out hard, catching footballs in Tampa. I'm told he's real motivated and hungry coming off the injury and has been so hyped he works out at night sometimes as well. Eagles are thinking about his legacy, and DJX has his eyes on the Hall of Fame, which is just crazy to think about in terms of Jackson trying to get to the, the NFL Hall of Fame. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to do so, but I love the mindset and the idea that this is a prove-it year for Jackson, and he's trying to go out there and show that he needs to be a big impact player on offense. He must step up in order for the Eagles to be very successful. I'll play off of his idea of being a Hall of Fame wide receiver very quickly. I think many of us would disagree that he would be a Hall of Fame wide receiver if he retired today. He'll Look at the last four wide receivers who were inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's a pretty good class. Former Eagle T.O., Randy Moss, Andre Reid, and Chris Carter, someone I worked with when I worked for Fox Sports in New York City. Chris Carter, a great person, fun to hang out with, but also an NFL Hall, Hall of Famer. Jackson's not even close to any of these players in terms of caliber of player, history in terms of statistics and category, but at the same time, Maybe if he balls out for the next four or five years, who knows? I mean, anything's possible. Depends on how good of a year he can not only have in 2020, but going forward. But I thought I want to share the tweet with you guys to kind of further supplant this idea that, hey, Sean Jackson must step up in 2020. Sure, he wants to be a Hall of Famer. It's a little crazy. But you can see the mindset here of I want to be the best player that I can be. And I love that idea as our number one player in terms of uh, stepping up in 2020. Question for, for, for you guys here. I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. Is Sean Jackson a Hall of Famer right now? Like, is he a Hall of Fame wide receiver? Could he even be become a Hall of Fame wide receiver with a lot of good uh, seasons ahead of him. Type Y down below for yes, type N down below for no. I'm right, moving on. Next player who must step up. This one's very easy. Again, I, I've probably already mentioned this in previous videos. Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard must step up on the offensive line. He must become the starting left tackle and a star at left tackle in order for the Eagles to be very successful on offense in 2020. Remember, former first-round draft pick. Struggled at left tackle, replacing uh, Jason Peters at times last year was abysmal at right tackle. They had to swap him out there because it was just it just didn't work out. And now he enters the 2020 offseason 
bulking up, getting bigger, according to his teammate Brandon Brooks, and hopefully ready to take over what is a very important position on not only the Eagles offensive line, but every offensive line there as the starting left tackle. He will replace Jason Peters because, yet again, the Eagles have not re-signed Jason Peters, so we assume that Andre Dillard is going to go ahead and be the starting offensive line. Even with the injury to Brandon Brooks, as long as Andre Dillard plays B-plus to better in terms of his overall performance at left tackle, the Eagles can still have a great offensive line. Right now, again, even without Brandon Brooks, they're still a great O-line. Sam Malo is still a great left guard. He's very underrated. Kelsey, one of the best centers in the league. Lane Johnson, the best right tackle. If Dillard can just be decent, again, B to B-plus at left tackle, this is still a great O-line. Before I get more into why Dillard must step up in 2020, there is a deal going on right now in terms of uh, Eagles 4th of July gear. Your 4th of July t shirt Shirts are officially on sale right now, $24.99 and free shipping with promo code 34SHIP at uh, the link, which of course is in the uh, description box, chatsports.com slash Eagles 4th is the place to go ahead and pick that one up. Again, chatsports.com slash Eagles 4th down in the uh, description box with your promo code 34SHIP. We'll get you these Eagles 4th of July t-shirts right now only for $24.99, so go ahead and pick one of those up because 4th of July will be here before you know it. Back to Andre Diller. Talking about how he must step up. A former NFL GM was uh, quoted talking about Dillard's offseason and how he can improve. He said this, he's got the athletic ability to pass protect. What he needs is strength improvement. They say he's done that in the offseason. Where that shows up on tape, this guy will get bull rushed back into the quarterback. He's got to get better at that. So we know, obviously, strength is a big deal. And that's why I mentioned it earlier. Brandon Brooks saying he's been working out and getting rid of his college baby body to his official big boy NFL body is a big, big deal. Again, the Eagles can be a very good, not only rushing team, passing team, pass protection team, a great O-line overall. It all starts, of course, with everyone doing their part, and that is a big part in terms of Andre Dillard trying to uh, assume the left tackle spot and be a star. He must step up going into the 2020 season. Despite that, with Brandon Brooks' injury, how, how worried are you guys about the Eagles' offensive line on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being not worried at all, 10 being extremely worried. I'm at like a 4 right now. I'm really not that worried about it. Again, I say that, uh, that Andre Dillard must step up, but I'm also assuming that both Sean Jackson and himself are going to step up and have good years. And if that's the case, like I said, then I'm not that worried. Is Brandon Brooks being injured a big deal? Yes, of course it is. He's probably the best left guard, or sorry, best right guard in the National Football League. But overall, I think they're going to be okay. Let me know how worried you guys are, though. Scale of 1 to 10 in the comment section down below. It's hard to find two more players who must step up on the Eagles offense because, to me, the Eagles offense is going to be one, uh, their better group. I think the defense is great, but I think the Eagles offense this year is going to be leaps and bounds better than it was last year. But in going with my four players here, I want to go ahead and throw Dallas Goddard here because this, to me, is a prove-it year for Dallas Goddard. He's been in the league now for a couple of years. He had a, a slow start his rookie year and then started to figure things out, and then last year was really playing well when Zach Ertz got injured. This is the year to go, okay, is Dallas Goddard just going to be a serviceable you know, uh, average to above average number two tight end in the NFL, or is he going to be the next Zach Ertz? Like, that's what this year tells me in terms of Dallas Goddard, because Zach Ertz is one of the best tight ends in the National Football League, and it looks like Dallas Goddard is in that mold and can do that. We just need to see a little more production on the offensive side, because, of course, you know, they're going to be sharing time, and Ertz is not going to be here forever. There are already talks about him getting a little too old. He wants to, you know, he'll need a new contract soon, blah, blah, blah. I think, though, this is a big year for Dallas Goddard. I hope he steps up and shows, hey, I was worth the early pick in the NFL draft a couple of years ago. I'm as good, if not better, than Zach Ertz. And the two of us on the football field at the same time can dominate. And that's one of my big questions with the Eagles in terms of the tight end spot. Can the 12 personnel, the package where you have two tight ends and two receivers, really work as well as it had done in the past for Philadelphia? You go back to the 2018 playoffs. When the Eagles won in the wildcard round and lost in the divisional round, they were absolutely dominant with the 12 personnel. They were not good in 12 personnel last year. Can they get back to being good with two tight ends on the football field? The question was answered by Football Outsiders just a couple of seasons ago when they were talking about how great the 12 personnel was for Philadelphia. It said, quote, the Eagles enjoy both Ertz and Goddard as pass-catching threats so much so that they are the most pass-happy team in the league out of the 12 personnel at 36%. They use the two tight end. Uh, the use of the two tight end is often a clear and immediate advantage in a league increasingly getting smaller on defense. This game was during the 2018 run, whenever Philadelphia with Nick Foles was really, really good with two tight end looks. Now they tried to be good last year, but it turns out, if you look at the statistics, they weren't very good in 12 personnel. So hopefully this year. Goddard steps up, making them able to use both of them on the football field at the same time in a successful fashion in terms of being one of the better 12 personnels in the entire National Football League. Again, 
Goddard, past couple, couple of years, has slowly gotten better and better, but it's time to see some, not, you know, identical to Zach Ertz's numbers, because Zach Ertz still has to go get his, but prove to the Eagle fans, prove to us that this is going to be a tight end, that you are a tight end who's going to be a great Eagle and a valuable Eagle for many, many years to come, and you'll probably get a brand new contract at the end of this year as well, because he has one more year after the 2020 season. Final player on this list. Might be a little unfair, but I have to mention it is Boston Scott. Boston Scott must step up at the running back spot for Philadelphia because we all know Miles Sanders is a starter. We all know Miles Sanders is a star, and we all expect Miles Sanders to dominate this year and get the majority of the touches. But the NFL is a running back by committee, right? Like They've got to have a backup running back who can share the load, take some pressure off of Sanders, and heaven forbid Sanders gets injured, is good to go. Now, they did not draft a running back in the NFL draft, which upset me, as many of you, of you guys know. Obviously, I wanted a running back there in the second round. They did sign Corey Clement, but right now, it looks like Boston Scott is going to be the number two running back. And whether it's him or Clement, someone has to step up in order to be that running back going into the 2020 season that will be able to spell Miles Sanders because, again, Sanders cannot do everything by himself. Now, Boston Scott, of course, seems ready to accept this challenge. He recently told the media about his goals for 2020, saying, quote, but I have goals for myself. It's important as a player at this level to have the amount of confidence in yourself. I want to be the offensive MVP. I want to bring that to my team. Those are goals that I want to accomplish. I want to be in the league for 10 years. That's what he's hoping to do. Now, before we get back to this, I want to take a quick break and remind you guys to be sure to subscribe to Philadelphia Eagles now because we're approaching 12,000 subs, which is awesome. If you love the content, go ahead and click the red subscribe button down below. We would greatly appreciate it. And also click that notification bell the way you're notified whenever we drop a brand new video. Back to Boston Scott. I love the content. Confidence, but it's time, to, just like just like Dallas Goddard, to see the improvement and the consistency for a 16-game season, for a full stretch of the year. Scott, last year, again, gets activated off the practice squad, comes in, doesn't do much, and then towards the end of the year, picked up the pace and was a, really a big performer and a big reason why the Eagles won all four of their last games and had a shot in the NFC Divisional and the NFC Wildcard round against the Seattle Seahawks. Let's see that over 16 games. Step up to the point where it's like, okay, it's not just Miles Sanders running the football. It's Miles Sanders plus Boston Scott. It's a one-two punch. It's a two-horse race, and I think if he's able to do that, Philadelphia's running game will go from what should be very good this year with, with Miles Sanders to elite this year and one of the best in the National Football League. That's if Scott can step up going into the 2020 season. So, with that being said, who will have a bigger impact in 2020? And I've talked about Boston Scott stepping up, but maybe it's going to be Corey Clement. Maybe you like Corey Clement, the former hero from Super Bowl 52. Type S down below for Scott. Type C down below for Clement. So, just to review here, again, I wanted to give you guys four players on offense that must step up for the Eagles in 2020 in order for Philadelphia to go to their fourth start straight playoffs. Deshaun Jackson has to be one of them. I think Deshaun Jackson absolutely needs to ball out this year and be healthy at the wide receiver spot. Andre Dillard, an easy pick. Starting left tackle, I mean, Jason Peters, it doesn't seem like he's going to be coming back. He needs to be solid on the left side of the off offensive line. Dallas Goddard, prove to us that you are going to be one of the best tight ends in the NFC and that you're not just going to be a number two tight end for the rest of your life. And then Boston Scott, of course, we need another, another a number two running back. Can it be you, Boston? Can you step up and prove that you can go from practice squad player to dominant number two back and even spell carries for Miles Sanders? Prove that to us. Step up here in 2020. All time we have for today on Philadelphia Eagles Now, I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.